All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Small Data SF, and I have a special guest, uh, George Fraser, who is the CEO and co-founder at Fivefran. Such a pleasure to meet you in person, and super excited to be chatting with you about various things that uh, we have been learning here at Small Data SF, and uh, super excited to chat with you today. Very glad to be with you. Thank you very much, uh, George. I'm kind of also curious to know about. Um, you know, I was just listening to you and Jordan there uh, in this fireside chat, and you mentioned about, you know, small data is important. Why do you feel so? Well, we've seen this for the whole time we've been in business at Fivetran. Um, we've been around for over 10 years. We have 7,000 customers, including small companies and large companies, but business data is often small. Um, mm. Many of the most important data sets that even very large companies rely on are not uh, the petabyte scale uh, tables that, that people uh, talk about at places like Facebook and, and Google. So uh, small data has uh, is not new and it is important. Yeah, and I think uh, I was also talking to a few leaders here at the conference as well and these are enterprise leaders and they're like, we do use DuckDB, we do use, uh, we do have like use cases where small data kind of plays a very important role. It kind of gives us the efficiency, the, the time, turnaround time is a uh, way too less as compared to what we do at, at Big Data. So I'm also curious to learn a little about, you know, what do you think about the current landscape of small data? I know it could be too early to be talking about it, but still it's kind of, you know, obviously it's been there for a while and uh, we've been seeing it growing now massively. Well, the reason we're seeing this trend grow is because CPUs keep getting faster and mm. networks keep getting faster. So remember, small is relative. It's all about uh, how big is the data compared to the computer on your desk or the computer that you can buy cheaply on a single node. Uh, so as, as processors get faster and faster and networks get uh, more and more capacity, um, the, the size of, of business data sets is not growing at the same pace and so it looks smaller every year. And I think that's why we're starting to see an inflection point is because a lot of the data sets that people care about in the real world uh, can actually be managed on a uh, very different kind of infrastructure than we're used to. Okay. No, I think those are fantastic points. In uh, Agreed, we've been seeing the machines becoming so powerful over time, and that kind of makes the the big data that we used to think like maybe five years or ten years back has become like a small data to us. Uh, I'm kind of also curious to know a little about you know, Fivetran has been working with such large enterprises over the last 10 years. You all have built, like you're saying, 7,000 customers. That's huge. And I know there are customers who work in big data as well. But how do they, are there any use cases that you would like to share from, five, you know, Fivetran customers that come out and, you know, are very much uh, into small data now? Well, uh, everyone has a mixture of, uh, of data sizes and query sizes. They right. have queries that take a long time to run and process a lot of data, but they also have, everyone has lots of queries that run quickly and process a small amount of data. And to me, the uh, the most exciting thing happening right now is the rise of, of, that's related to small data, is the rise of open table formats. Uh, mm. Open table, table formats, data lakes, uh, they are gonna allow you to use a mixture of approaches with the same data. Uh, so in a large enterprise where you do have some big data and you have some queries that process huge amounts of data that need big systems, uh, and that will continue to be an important workload for you, but you don't have to use that same system for everything. You can, you can combine uh, different systems, including systems that are optimized for small data, depending on the particular thing you're working on right now. I, I think that's what we're gonna see over the next couple of years is a Cambrian explosion of the uh, compute engines that people use to interact with their data enabled by open table formats. Mm, I love it and uh, I kind of, you know, obviously with the, all the openness, I've been seeing a lot of data enterprise leaders as well. They're super excited about it. They kind of feel that, oh, we have the openness to be honest. And uh, I'm kind of also curious um, and interested to know about is something that we should you know, is this something that we should keep a tap on? Do you think this is like the next big thing? I do. I think this is, I, I think there's a couple trends that are related. It's not obvious that they're related right now, but trust me, they are. And they are um, the small data phenomenon, which I would define as, you know, the data sizes are growing slower than the, the processors are growing. <laughs> uh, so more and more fits on a single node. 
uh, and open table formats. And those right. two interact in this really important way, which is that uh, the small data ecosystem is going to get a seat at the table, even at the biggest companies, uh, if those companies adopt open table formats. I love it. And uh, what do you see? What, uh, how, would you, how would you see like the future for small data? Is it, um, is it going to be very fast? How it's going to evolve? Or it's like a slow process it, it, it or long It will start show? with low-hanging fruit. Uh, mm. So, for example, at Fivetran, uh, our fastest growing destination is data lakes. And the way we ingest data into the data lake is we do it ourselves using a service we built, uh, using DuckDB actually, uh, called Data Lake Writer. Mm. Uh, and this service, because it's a specialized service just for this purpose, we were able to make it so efficient that we just roll it into our pricing model. So if you select uh, Data Lake as your destination inside Fivetran, your ingest costs go to zero. They're just included in the regular price of Fivetran. That's an example of a specific workload getting moved to a uh, special purpose execution engine that was designed for that particular workload that was enabled by open table formats. Mm. And I think we're gonna see a lot of that. Well, I think we'll also see a lot of people uh, running workloads locally on their laptops. The computers sitting in front of us uh, have a lot of processing power. And so I think you'll, you know, you'll see this sort of low hanging fruit get pulled away yeah. into yeah. these other compute engines. But the uh, premier data platforms of today will continue to be very important. The, the thing about data is, uh, as you make the systems more efficient, people just ask more questions. Uh, the budget <laughs> right. never goes down, uh, you just do more stuff. And I think that will continue to be true in this uh, new era. Love it, those are fantastic insights, uh, George. Uh, I'm also kind of wanting to learn a little about what's next at Fivetran. We've been seeing, obviously, I visit a lot of conferences all across the world. I've been seeing Fivetran all around the world and you all are making some amazing impact out there uh, in and working with the, some of the largest enterprises there so kind of curious to learn about what's next at five trend yeah I mean the big priorities right now are performance uh, mm. that's something you don't necessarily see on the outside but five trend moves uh, some very large data sets at very low latency uh, for some of the biggest companies in the world and so there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to just make things work uh, efficiently um, that's, so that's a big priority. Data lakes are uh, a big priority. Um, and uh, our SDK is a big priority. So mm. we, we have just uh, uh, released uh, in preview. Um, we've been working on it for about uh, over six months. Um, nice. Our connector SDK, which allows customers to write their own connectors and then run them on Fivetran uh, infrastructure and benefit from the Fivetran core platform and all the destination support we offer, including, for example, the data lake writer. So you can write your, your own connector uh, in Python, have Fivetran run it, and then we'll ingest the data into the destination the same way we would for a connector we built ourselves. Some big things are coming at Fivetran. I can sense it now, and thanks for sharing those. Uh, definitely looking forward to those. And one last question for our audience. I know you know, Fivetran website is like the best place to go and visit and learn more about Fivetran. But they, they want to also follow you, learn more about what you share, which is the best place. Is LinkedIn, Twitter, X, what, what works? I, I'm on Twitter. I'm Fraser George W on Twitter, so you can follow me there. Uh, awesome. And I write on Fivetran's blog regularly. I just wrote a post about uh, this very subject. Awesome. So I'm going to share that place. with our audience for sure. And thanks for doing this, George. Such a pleasure chatting with you on The Ravit Show. Uh, definitely looking forward to learning and keeping a tap on Fivetran as always. Great. Nice Thank you. you. Thank you everyone for joining us.